if you're struggling with your arpeggios, if you don't have enough control while playing them, if you want them to be smoother and faster, in this video I'm going to reveal to you a way in which you can instantly improve on all these aspects and bring your arpeggios to the next level. <laughs> What's up everyone, my name is Evgeny Genchev and you're watching Sweet Struggle. On here you can see me sharing my knowledge and experience both as a performer and as a teacher to help you get a better perspective, better awareness, improve your skills and help you on your musical journey. So as you can see today we are diving in to the topic of arpeggios and we're going to discuss how we can instantly improve them. There is a surprisingly easy answer to this. Here it is. You've got to think in four rather than three. Let me just say that one more time. Instead of thinking in three, you've got to think in four. What does this mean though? Let me tell you the full story. At the moment you most probably are playing your arpeggios like that. This is fine, I mean it's almost good, but we both know that something is missing. What could that be? Nothing? Your arpeggios are not smooth, they're bumpy. They are a mountain road instead of a motorway, staircase instead of a water slide, wrestler instead of a ballet dancer. I can do this all day, but why? What is the actual reason for it? I'll tell you why. Your thumb is heavy, it's clumsy, that's why. But why, but really, why is this such a common problem? Let me start backwards. Besides the physicality of the thumb, the obvious fact that it is much different than the other fingers, we also need to take into consideration the nature of its movement. It has a different direction of flexion, so this may cause actual problems. If you would be moving it the same way you are doing with the other fingers, then it would be moving from side to side rather than up and down. Imagine if you actually had to move your other fingers in the opposite direction while playing. That would be a disaster. Impossible, that could never happen, not in a million years. That being said, you may be familiar with the index finger moving like that. So that flexion can create tension. And when you're tense in your thumb, then your wrist is fixed. It's not really flexible, it cannot move much. That's our design. Yeah, I'll give you a second to try it out for yourself and see what comes out. And this is important because if your wrist is not relaxed and flexible, it becomes impossible to play arpeggio as well. The reason it looks this way is because when we play an arpeggio, the thumb needs to go under your hand. And that's a more natural movement than actually pressing it up and down, so it should be technically fine, isn't it? Technically it should be. But the interval that the thumb needs to cover during an arpeggio is large. As a result, the flexing of the thumb isn't enough. The thumb isn't long enough or flexible enough for this. We need to include the wrist. We need to make sure that we practice that turn in order to make it more fluid. I have discussed a few ways to practice this in my video on scales. So check it out if you want to see how you can address this issue. I'll make sure I put link in the description or somewhere around. Continuing on my thought though, if your wrist is fixed, then in order for your finger to reach the necessary note, your body has to compensate. And the way it does that is through using the next available joints. This is the elbow and the shoulder. So basically that is why when you play arpeggios, you look like a butterfly that is trying to take off. So, in order to avoid that, and no, I don't 
mean flying. If you can fly, then by all means. I thought we were speaking about arpeggios. So in order to fix that, relax your wrist and make sure you keep it flexible. And while we are at it, also re relax your shoulders and stop flipping this elbow around. It should be kept in one line. Now we are coming to the most important element of the movement, pressing down with your thumb. Even if you relax your wrist and everything is fine, you might still end up dropping your thumb as if you're poking someone. That sounds a lot like you're making an accent every three notes. Or maybe in a bit more technical term, perhaps you're thinking in triplets. But actually you're not thinking in triplets, you're just forced to because the physicality of the arpeggio is such that it exposes the heaviness of the thumb that we spoke about. Wow! So that is why we end up with a bump every time we play the thumb. <gasps> and this gets me to my initial point. In order to avoid these accents and to gradually eliminate them, instead of thinking in three, we should be thinking in four. Yes, yes, four is the magical numbers when it comes to arpeggios. And why is that the case? When you become aware of the accents on the thumb every three notes and you try to shift them instead of every third note, shift them to every fourth note, all of a sudden the accent in the thumb almost disappears. It is covered. You cannot hear it that loud anymore. And that is because your momentum now is leading towards a different note. In order to put this into practice, I would personally suggest that you initially make it as obvious of an accent as you can. In this way, both your hands and your brain are clearly gonna register what you're trying to achieve. Do that for a while until you override the habit of stabbing everybody's ears with your thumb. And then gradually you should start taking away from the accents and ideally get to a point where you just keep a mental note of the division of four rather than three. And that is when your arpeggios are gonna become as smooth as Chinese silk. Of course, if you're into that. More importantly, if the music requires it. And no, I don't mean the music would require Chinese silk. Why? Why would it require silk at all? I meant smoothness of the performance of arpeggios. Okay? If the music requires something more dynamic, something more articulated, that's fine as well. Because now your arpeggios are beautifully controlled and even. And that's how you can instantly change the way you play arpeggios with just a shift of the mental division you have. I believe this should really help your Swiss struggles be a bit easier to handle. Try this out and let me know what your experience is. How does it feel? Write it all down in the comments. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button and show me some love. Show me some love. Subscribe if you haven't already and click that bell icon to make sure that you get notified every time I come out with a new video. Or, or don't, I mean, do whatever you like. Practice is a good alternative though, practice is always good. But in any case, thank you so much for watching, thank you for stopping by, and I'll see you in the next video.